What's up everyone? Let me just start off this video by saying um, the hurricane that just recently went through Puerto Rico. I just want to say my thoughts and prayers goes out to any family or friends that were affected by that. Um, hope everyone's okay and things go smoothly with the recovery over there. Now, today we got an awesome video for you. I got the opportunity to meet up with Joshua McWilliams, aka Water Pigs USA, and get to tour his fish room of some amazing goldfish. I'm high quality, fancy goldfish, not stuff you typically see in stores. So it, it was really awesome experience and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I do. On top of that, we, not only will you see fancy, beautiful goldfish, but there's also a rarely seen goldfish in this video. So you'll want to make sure you watch it all the way through so you can catch a glimpse of this. Um, his setup was a mixture of uh, aquariums and tubs and just airlines running through sponge filters it was uh, very simple uh, but very nicely done and cleanly done so without further ado here we go so what are we looking at here Josh in this tank there is uh, a Ryukin and telescope cross that I bred myself. They're an uh, outcross project that I'm working on to create a line of Demikins. Alright, one something he explained to me earlier is this goldish color is actually a wild color, right? Yes, that's considered wild color. It's a all of the greenish bronze. It's actually one of my favorite ones and in this tank. Let me not say overall because we all know you got some beautiful fish. <laughs> I'm just, it's just not common to me. I look like I could just take it out and hang it on my gold chain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Ahead. We got over here. All right, what do we got here? All righty, in this tank we have butterfly telescopes. They were bred from a red and a black cross. And so we have some of the actual red and black showing in the offspring. What kind of snail you got there in the back? I have a trapador and then there's some common uh, ram's horn in there also. The trapadors okay. don't reproduce as fast and I usually try to keep a few of those around in the tanks to keep as a little cleanup guy. Yeah, he's, he's really cool looking. All right. And down here. Down there we have a Vietnamese telescope. They have a little bit of a different shaped body and tail set as the traditional Chinese butterfly telescope, um, along with a wild colored ranchu. That the ranchu, both of those were hobbyist bred. The Ranchu is another hobbyist that's here in Tampa, and the other one comes from Idaho. Yeah, he's, he's got a great pattern to him. The, the colors on that fish is the reason why I kept it for so long. And it soon will be available on uh, waterpigsusa.com. Nice. Alrighty, and here we have some Chinese imported lion heads. They're the traditional uh, form of uh, lion heads that come from China that um, ranchus were actually developed from. And the Chinese always have a more flatter back than the ranchu, and they have overdeveloped wings, which is the growth that comes on their heads. Right, so yep. And about how old did you say these are? Um, those are probably a little under a year old. pattern on this one's head is, is great. There's something about goldfish when they when they come up to the glass it's just too funny. You can see them waddle back and forth. Yeah they, well they, they really have general interest I think in what you're doing and probably nine times out of ten it's because they think you're gonna feed them. <laughs> they do like to eat. Hence water piggies. That's, that is exactly how I got my name. What beauties do we have here? Alright, these are some 
imported Chinese Ryukins, um, of the calico variety. Um, some of the different importers and growers actually grow different body types. These typically don't have the classic really deep body and high hump that some Ryukins do. I have this particular breeder, I assuming concentrated more on color pattern than they did uh, body type. All right, what do we got in this tank? This tank is some um, Chinese bred Demikins that were imported um, by King Koi and Goldfish. I brought these back with me from California, my recent trip to the West Coast Goldfish Palooza, hosted by the Goldfish Council. And this is a line of fish that I'm planning on breeding with another local breeder. I also have one Oranda that came in with that shipment from Coast Gem. They flew, flew coach with me back all the way from California. <laughs> Put them in Put in the above bin rack? Uh, above bin rack for carry on. That's how they came. Did they really? Yes. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know you could even do that. I thought you would have to check these in. They have to just go through regular um, TSA security. They um, do swipes of the bag to make sure there's nothing explosive, any residue on it. And your hands and everything. It's a little extra security, but um, they do allow them in your carry on luggage. Nice. I remember you told me in the past. That the black goldfish, how to get a dice darker color in them. There's a tip for that, right? Yes, keeping black goldfish in darker backgrounds and including UVB lighting that they use for reptiles will actually imitate the sunlight and create a much blacker, darker fish. But sunlight's always your your number one friend for these these fish. Okay, and. And another thing on this one was, I believe you mentioned that the black will not stay on these types of goldfish, right? Certain types of goldfish will maintain their black their entire life, and um, I would say a good 75% of them will not. They will turn orange. It's the amount of melanin they have in their system, and at the rate that they lose that melanin, um, that determines their final color. Yeah, you can see here, the gold underlying on this black fish. Even though it looks amazing, so but it's kind of cool to have while it's go while it's uh, it is, growing it out. Is. And uh, telescopes are the only true black. Everything else was bred to a telescope to get black color. All right, and then down below, looks like you got a grow out tank of some sort. Yeah, these are. This is a very shallow bin that I keep for fish that require shallow water. Um, these are golf ball pearl scales, also imported from China. Why, they, really, why do they call them golf balls? Just like what you see, they look like they swallowed a golf ball. Yeah, they really are little round butter balls. They, um, and that's a natural body shape, well, as natural as a mutated goldfish would be. <laughs> but um, that you know, nothing is done really to enhance that shape, other than um, you know genetics. You can feed them extra and get them a little rounder, but they typically are born and grow into that shape. All right, then over here we have... All righty, those are black butterfly telescopes that I bred myself last uh, late spring. Um, they're, they have a really nice, deep, uh, sturdy body on them, and they really uh, turned out quite nice um, for U.S. bred hobbyist fish. And I gotta say, I think these are one of my favorites that you have. Thank you. Because, oh, there's just something about the black ones with the high fins. It just looks so, I don't know, they're kind of a tougher looking goldfish compared yeah. to most of the other oh, yeah. fish. Oh, shaking its butt on film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rump shakers. Rump shakers. All right, and then down here, it looks like we got something similar, right? Yes, these are a group of black broadtail moors um, bred by a uh, local 
uh, breeder here in the U.S. in Kansas, Amy Shanka. Um, they are really beautiful fish. They're not too happy in the warmer weather. They seem to be more active when it's actually a little cooler. But um, So they're pouting a little bit here. But they're really a beautiful fish with a lot of long trailing draping uh, tail fin. And that's what broad tail means? Is yes. basically the almost like veil tail of the yes, it's goldfish a, it's world? Yes, it's similar to veil tail. And uh, the variety without the telescope eyes are typically called veil tails. Oh, okay. So that in combination with the telescope is when you get the broad tail. Nice. Alright, it looks like we got another grow out tank here of some sort. Some beautiful little gold and black combinations along with a nice big red one here. So, so Josh, what do we got in this tank? Uh, this tank is uh, my new line of butterfly telescopes that I'm working with. They're a red and white line. Uh, and this is some babies that I have um, selected for resale and to get uh, and get other people in the hobby interested. I plan on sending these out to different people. Um, but this is a really nice group. Uh, they're eyes are really nicely well balanced compared to their bodies and there's some varied in sizes which you'll find with goldfish uh, these are all from one spawning um, you'll have some that are much larger and some that are much smaller I keep usually the ones that are in the middle to the larger size um, and let them grow out a little bit and show their key features before I send them on to other hobbyists Okay, while we're on the subject, uh, where could people find your fish if uh, they were interested in, in goldfish? Yeah, if they're interested in, in getting uh, some of the lines of goldfish that I'm working with, they can purchase them on my website at waterpigsusa.com. Okay. Or they can even contact me through direct messenger on Instagram or Facebook, which you can also find me at waterpigsusa. All right, so, so what do we have in this tank? These are um, from my line of Thai Ryukin. They, uh, this is the, the, the desired body type that you'll see on what they like in show fish with the really nice deep body and really high hump. And this particular variety is a short tail variety. They come in long tail, veil tail, um, broad tail. They come in all different types of tails. But this is what they call a short fin Ryukin. All right, and in this tank, we got some of Josh's own spawns. And go ahead and take the floor there, Josh. All righty, these uh, particular fish are from my same spawn as the other butterfly telescope we looked at. But these are the ones that I'm actually considering keeping to breed back into the line. So these are my future breeders that I have separated them, giving them a little special attention and observing them more uh, to select my future breeders. So let me ask you, what characteristics do you look for when you're selecting your future breeders in this line? So in this particular line, they're butterfly telescopes. So there's two things on the fish that are really important and that's their tail and, their, and then telescope is their eyes. So okay. butterfly telescopes, they have to have a nice butterfly shaped tail when viewed from above and they have to have the really nice even uh, telescope eyes. Okay, and we'll get to the parents here in a minute, right? Yes. And, and they're enjoyed really, top view to me is the best way to enjoy them and you'll be able to see their parents uh, top view when we get to them. Okay, so one of the more rarer fish that Josh is involved with is going to be shown right here. Uh, why don't you tell us what you got here, Josh? Uh, I have blue egg phoenix, which are a very rare breed of goldfish. Um, they have uh, their dorsalis, so lack of dorsal fins. Um, they have zero wind growth uh, that's on their heads, and they have a long flowing phoenix tail. And these particular fish are uh, just over a year old, maybe a year and a half old. 
and really nice. And I can give you a view of them from the side since they're not being kept in a tank. Yeah, it's, just a, it's just a bright coloration to them. And then um, one of the things that sticks out most to me is the metallic shine to them, uh, especially down from the head to the tail fin. And it's one thing that like when they're in a darker tub that he has them in uh, next to it, that you could just kind of see them swim by and it'll be a, just the metallic shine on their backs. amazing fish and you said there was a cultural thing to these fish as well right it's yes these were bred and kept by Chinese royalty or the emperor um, as a in their in a, the more elite kept this type of goldfish and when there was a cultural revolution that's when a, many of them were lost so we discussed earlier that you were one of the only breeders, or there's actually a very limited amount of breeders that actually do this fish. Yes, there is just a very limited amount of breeders that work with these fish. They are rare and were brought over from China as a cultural exchange. We exchanged them some of our Philadelphia blue veil tails, and they gave us some of the blue egg phoenix line to work with. And there was just a few select breeders that worked with them, and I was lucky enough to be uh, given some fry to work with last year um, as a preservation of the uh, breed and uh, lo and behold got them to already spawn and have more offspring so the the line continues awesome it's really amazing fish all right so here we have one of your other beautiful uh, fish that look great from looking from the top, yes. which is the parents to the breed that we were talking about earlier, right? The these are not the parents, but the same type. Same type, okay. These are um, Calico butterfly telescopes. These are my adult breeders to them. I did not spawn anything in spring because I just the lack of room. So I'm going to try to do a fall uh, spawn out of them since I worked with my red and whites in the spring. And these particular ones, as you can see, have a true butterfly tail shape when viewed from above and the nice thing about the calicos is that a proper calico has a really nice black striping or spotting through their translucent tail which is really nice okay and after the black I think the calico is the one that stands out most to me when it comes to goldfish because you see red and whites all the time you know that they're, they're not exactly rare as far as the patterning mm-hmm so the calico is not something you typically find in the, like your big box stores, it seems like. Yeah, they're, they're fewer and far between. And getting a true calico that has really nice coloration, which you'll see is um, should have a lot of blue undertones in its back, like that fish, Yeah. with the black speckling and small amounts of red. That's traditionally what a really nice calico should look like. All right, and now we have another beauty. The red on this is so vibrant. Uh, what are we looking at here? This is uh, the parent stock to my red and white butterfly telescope. This is actually the mother, and she produced all of those babies in one spawn. And they generally... That's... Motorcycle. Motorcycle, okay. <laughs> so generally, um, Goldfish in general um, have thousands of eggs, and then we call down from the group and pick out the ones that are the healthiest. But this is the mother. They're very friendly. They they actually like being handled. So so you, you chose this one once again because the telescope. So it's got nice it's shape got to nice the eyes. Shape eyes and its tail, when viewed from above, is a true butterfly pattern.
This is the father. Oh, big daddy. Really impressive fish. He's got a beer belly. He's nice and round, deep body. But his tail is very, very beautiful and widespread. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's very wide. Josh is not a, a, a little man either. He's, he's pretty tall, so his, his hands aren't small. No. And he covers his whole hand. <laughs> so he's my, a big boy. My hand from uh, fingertip to palm is around eight and a half inches. Yeah, and he just covered it. Like. Yeah. These are very large fish. All right, and then these guys. These are imported chocolate pom-pom goldfish. They're not a true, like, milky chocolate that you would eat. They are a little bit lighter with some red undertones. You're saying these aren't edible? They are not edible. <laughs> Although some people do eat carp, uh, I, it's not a taste I've acquired. <laughs> I'm not a seafood person either. But they're, um, but this color, it gets that more rich or chocolatey tone the older they get. And then their pom-poms will develop bright red uh, like little cheerleader pom-poms on the front of their nose. All right, you can see this one big time. Oh, got turned away. And they're called right. um, nasal bouquets is the actual technical term for pom-pom. So this one's white. You see that one? It's white versus the other ones. Do you think do you find that that makes a difference when, once they get older, like the color well, when they're juveniles? The white, it just means it's going through its color change. Oh, okay, so that one's going through it earlier than the other yes. one. Yes, so that one is going to probably be the first one for its pom-poms to turn red. So you call these the cheerleaders? Yeah, they're the cheerleaders <laughs> of the goldfish community. You need to have them at all the goldfish bowls. All right, here we have a bubble eye. Very feisty bubble eye. And this is black, and it's a true black that will probably remain black for most of its life. Um, but these fish are really good for ponds. They don't typically do as well in tanks, but they do like pond life, and um, you see their eyes are actually on top of their head, and then their fluid-filled sacs are right below their eyes. But they're really fun, different variety of fish, and um, they, they're very active swimmers. You would think the bubbles would slow them down, but they're very fast and actually um, quite spunky of the goldfish world. When I first started keeping them, I was not expecting that. I thought they would be sluggish and slow-moving fish, but they're actually quite spunky and really fast swimmers. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. You'd think they'd be uh, slower and probably a little more cautious because of that. Because, uh, yeah, you don't want that getting snagged on anything. I think that's a common yeah. thing that happens with some people that keep them in aquariums. They keep unsafe decorations with them, right? And yes, and, some, and, and they will pop. pop. And, and you also told me if it pops, something happens to the bubble itself, right? Yeah, and well, it opens it up for infection, but on top of it, if it does grow back, it grows back at a different rate and will always be a different size than the other one. But we'll see him swim away. He's not slow moving. So Josh stays pretty active when it comes to breeding your goldfish um, and also keeping quality goldfish at that. Um, so you can see here, it's just a small sample of some of the fish he has for sale. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out is we have the blue egg phoenix here and how dark they look here versus they what they look like in the metal tub uh, where they have more of a blue color. And here, because it's a black tub, they really get more of a black coloration to them to where you can't even notice that they're the blue phoenix at all and the, but they do still have that metallic band on the back now he has some set to the side here in a basket that he's that are getting ready for the ship and you can see how drastically the really change has occurred just from the background um, and they're just adapting to their surroundings so when people say that uh, a fish in a bag completely looks different than how it's going to look like in your aquarium. You can see here how dramatic it could be with some fish in particular. Because when I look at these, I can't even tell that they're the same fish uh, until he pointed it out to me. 
but uh, by keeping them here, you can actually see a lot of the underlying colors that you don't notice once they're in a dark environment. Still beautiful fish, though. All right. So, Josh, first of all, thank you for letting us in your madhouse here. Yeah. Of a beautiful goldfish, of course. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I do know Josh through the uh, Tampa Bay Aquarium Society, uh, which is our local fish club, and he's a huge member there. He's pretty much taken over people's lives with goldfish. Um, he's introduced it to a lot of the people there, and people have realized the beauty that he produces and started to keep them to themselves. Um, he's also a huge member in the goldfish community. Uh, once again, I think we already mentioned, you can find you on Instagram, Facebook, uh, he also has his website. website. It's, uh, it's, it's up and coming. Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, I'm a little bit finicky on my content and on what I actually put on there. So it's a uh, work in progress to get to where the finished product that I want to produce. Right. So, which you can tell you're a little finicky by <laughs> oh, excuse me, with the stuff that you produce, right? Because everything here is high quality. Um, you're taking your time and you perfect the, the line that you're working with. Um, it's very impressive. But every, everything here is impressive. There's not one fish that I can see where it's just like, okay, and he's just keeping that out of, out of generosity for the fish. No, these are <laughs> amazing fish and you do a great job. And, and then even on top of that, you were telling me, how healthy you keep your fish and take the precautions when eating these fish. Yes, um, biosecurity is a important issue when dealing with imported fish. Um, and I'm sure it's the same in other aspects, not just goldfish, um, especially when dealing with wild caught fish. I mean, there's a lot of parasites and stuff like that. Um, but there's different diseases and parasites that are found on these uh, farms that are kept, uh, you know, in the Asian communities, Thailand, China, Japan, um, are all big um, exporters of goldfish. And so when bringing them into my system, which um, it's very important for me to do a really strict quarantine, um, I do full rounds of uh, preventative medication and uh, parasite removal. Uh, and to me, that's super important uh, because all it takes is bringing one fish in that might possibly have something and introducing it into your system um, that could, you know, devastate your entire population of goldfish. So to me, it's very important to take those precautions to keep the health of my fish uh, at its utmost best it can be. Right. And we, we've all seen it. If you're watching YouTube, you've probably seen uh, things that Jenny from Sockville Aquatics has gone through, uh, people like Lucas Bretz and other uh, YouTube fish keepers that you can see how important it is to maintain that quality of fish in the fish room. Um, and then even if you're a new person that is into the fish hobby, it's important to get a produce a high quality fish to give to them because it could influence the future of their fish keeping hobby for them. And we as fish keepers want, only want this community to grow and when we get something into someone's hand, we want to make sure it's the easiest process for them as possible and we give them the best opportunity to be successful with it. Um, so you're, the Goldfish Council is the only other thing that you're a big influence in. You hit the ground running with this uh, Goldfish thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the Goldfish Council is an organization that uh, was founded only last year. Um, there was a lack of uh, groups, there was small groups of people that remained in a, what they call a breeder circle, um, where they exchanged fish and stuff like that, but they needed a community that not only um, promoted the hobby itself, but doing good things for the hobby, as in education and research. And that's the main focus of the Goldfish Council, and that's why I decided to volunteer my time and efforts, uh, is to promote the education and the research side of it. They also have standards that um, can be used in goldfish shows. I'm a certified judge through the Goldfish Council um, and travel around and judge different shows 
Uh, but our, the main focus is education and research. Right now we're in the process of getting uh, money together to launch our first research project. Um, but we, and we are hosting these educational events. And also in the background, we're working on doing online educational sources on our website. Nice, very nice. Yeah, those things are important. Because I think goldfish can still be misunderstood even by a more experienced audience if you haven't kept them. Before. Yeah, if you haven't kept them before, they're they're different from all of your other tropical varieties. Um, as in, you know, the amount of filtration it takes. Um, they are they produce way more waste than any of your other fish. Um, and just learning all the different things from your water quality, disease and parasite parasite prevention. Um, into actually what it takes, the genetics and the and understanding color and variety um, when you're working with different lines of fish. So, one thing that, uh, first of all, when I started, uh, or when I met Josh in Tech Bay First Society, I wasn't a goldfish fan. I did watch a lot of gold aquatics, a lot of fish were cool, and and this is no knock on her stuff, um, but when I saw Josh's stuff in person, you know, when you see a goldfish in person, uh, sometimes the scene on camera doesn't quite do it justice. And when I saw this big fat water pig, as, as you guys say, I was just amazed by it. And I actually am very likely to own goldfish in the future now because of it. Uh, because it really is something different compared to most fish that you see in the freshwater community. And Another thing, you, I think the first time we met, I actually just saw you on the Golden Aquatics channel for uh, Golden Goldfish and Koi show down in Orlando. Yes. And now you just came back from, what was the show that you just did? It was our first annual uh, West Coast Goldfish Palooza. Goldfish Palooza in California. Yep. And which was pretty successful and hopefully will be very uh, successful. And we've already are in the works of planning next year. So we're making it an annual event. Uh, we got a lot of support from the local people there that want to see it there again. So uh, they, as long as they're putting forth the effort, the Goldfish Council is committed to working with whatever group in the country that actually can, uh, are willing to host us. We're willing, if you're willing to put in the work of um, the planning, we're willing to send our representatives and to uh, provide resources to give you that education and the show. Amazing, amazing. And, and us as hobbyists, it's important that if you're local, and even if you don't keep goldfish, try to attend these things, because uh, if the goldfish community grows, we all grow as a community, and uh, there's been, I mean, you guys have seen me at better shows. Uh, yeah, I've even gone to saltwater shows because it all, we all benefit from each other. And then as it grows, more people get involved, and more people get involved, and more strains of fish we get. And, and of course, you know, there's always battles with whether we can keep fish or not, as uh, you've seen on Rachel Leary's channels. And, you know, it's, the more popular it becomes, the harder it is for them to stop us from keeping these fish. And it, it really is an enjoyable hobby for all of us, or else you wouldn't be watching this video. And I, I gotta say, everywhere you're like, you're not enjoying this. <laughs> I don't know what will. I, this doesn't change your mind. You gotta see them in person. Uh, so if you have a local person that keeps little fancy goldfish like this, uh, go, go ahead and check them out because it really is impressive. Yeah, they they're really a labor of love. They're they're some work, but you know, every morning I come up here and I am greeted with these bubbly personalities waiting to be fed, um, you know, I mean, and just, and, and really, it's also brought me uh, a lot of peace, you know, if you're having a rough day, if you're having, um, you know, moments of anger or anxiety, you come out here and look at these goofy things swimming around, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're goofy, but at the same time, gorgeous, Right. and you, you just, you can't help but to smile, and, you know, and it just brings you into a different uh, mindset. And I think that's with uh, the aquarium hobby in general. You know, and, you know, there's this bit of zen or peace that comes with water and living organisms in the water and enjoying them. Everything from you know watching my shrimp in my little nano tank to watching the puffers fight over food to coming out here and watching these gorgeous fish swim around in these raised ponds and tanks. 
It's, it's, yeah, it's tranquil, right? It is. Very, very relaxing. We all benefit from it once. You don't realize it until you keep it yourself. How, uh, how much it actually helps and things like that. Yeah, I mean, we all know uh, there's other people out there that can prove to help PTSD, depression, things like that. So, yeah, definitely great. Uh, one last thing before I go. So, one common thing that people think about locals is they have to be kept in cold water. We can see here, even outside Florida, it does get hot. Ah. <laughs> you, your fish are doing it. Not only great, but thriving. So, what is it? Cold water. Well, uh, goldfish are are cold water fish. But what that means is, is they can tolerate cold water. It, it does not mean that they love cold water. Um, some people think that they need cold water at some point to hibernate at certain points. I have found, uh, you know, my fish do really well in the warmer water, um, and. Typically, the, the higher the temperature of water, you just have to watch your water parameters and making sure that your uh, your water, the actual levels of nitrates and right. ammonia and nitrites, all stay at a at a reasonable rate that you know allow the fish to thrive. Um, in higher temperatures, you just are struggling with that a little bit more than cold water. Right, the metabolism. The metabolism is, is yeah. increased and they eat more, so they're. They do grow faster in warmer water. They and and some argue that their lifespans might be cut down sh slightly um, by only living in warm water. But um, my fish have done really well. Um, they breed regularly, and typically with goldfish, that's a good sign. If your fish are constantly chasing and wanting to breed, something's right because they only do it in the perfect conditions. Right, and I think a lot of that is. True for the wild, for the wild type of goldfish. At this point, goldfish has been pretty domesticated. Yes, it's not. It's not that they have. They don't have issues transitioning to different temperatures. Well, I uh, hope everyone enjoyed this tour of Josh's uh, goldfish lab. Is what I call it. I don't know. I don't know if you have a name for it. Uh, Probably call it the goldfish lab because yeah, you got a lot of experiments going on here. I do. I do have a lot of breeding experience that's interesting. You got secrets back here. I do have secrets that nobody that's off limits. Off limits. They, they won't be announced probably for a couple years until it's fully developed. You know it's serious when you got secrets. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll include uh, links to all the ways to reach Josh in the description below, uh, as well as Goldfish Council, his Instagram, and any other uh, websites that pertain to this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys' time for watching this. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, see you guys.